machining and machine tool operations. So this is K. Raju, Assistant Professor from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, M. Kumarasamy College of Engineering, Karur. So today we are going to discuss about machining and machine tool operations. So as far as machining is concerned, from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, we used to have the lathe machine for the manufacturing. So lathe is an universal machine which is used for the manufacturing or machining of components for different assemblies or manufacturing and fabrications. Later we have shaper machine for a special purpose machining. We have slaughter machine, planner machine, milling machine, drilling machine, grinding machine. So all these machines are special purpose machine whereas lathe is an universal machine. So lathe it is a longitudinal axis turning horizontal equipment with which almost all operations can be performed. So it is called as the father of the machine and other machines such as shaper machine can be used to machine keyway or dovetail operations, phasing, planning operations and slaughter machine can be used to cut internal gears, external gears, keyways. Similarly, planner machine is also used to machine heavy objects. So all these shaper machines, slaughter and planner, all these machines uses single point cutting tool. Whereas shaper machine, it is used for medium sized machining of slaughter machine, it is used for small sized objects and planner machine is used for heavy objects. Whereas shaper medium sized cuts are given, slaughter is used for small cuts. So depth of the cut will be very less compared to the other three. Planner machine, you can go for heavy cuts. Then we go for milling machine, especially we go for milling machine to manufacture gears, spur gear, helical gear, different gears are used in using milling machine. Drilling machine is used to put holes, it can be through holes or blind holes, even for a threading and similar grinding machine is used to finish the surfaces. So as far as grinding machine is concerned you have cylindrical grinding, surface grinding. Cylindrical grinding it is used for cylindrical objects, machining of cylindrical objects and surface grinding machine can be used for flat surfaces. So first we shall see about the lathe. So principle of lathe machine, then we are going to see about types of lathe machine, so turning operations such as turning, taper turning, facing, knurling, thread cutting, drilling and almost all operations are performed on a lathe. So principles of lathe machine is in this a workpiece is held between the held by chuck. The workpiece is rotated when it is held between the jaws of the chuck, a motor is used to rotate the chuck, whereas ro chuck rotates along with the holded workpiece. We use single point cutting tool which is held in the tool post, which is fed against the workpiece. When the tool comes in contact with the workpiece, the rotating workpiece, the material is removed and that process we call it as machining. So types of lathe as far as lathe is concerned, we have seen longitudinal axis turning horizontal equipment. We have engine lathe, turret lathe, single and multiple spindle automatic lathes, tracer lathe, conventional programmable lathe, computerized numerical control lathes. Whereas engine lathe is almost, it is a primarily used for single pieces of short runs and it is operated manually. 
considering the turret layer it is equipped with multi sided tool post at a time you can use six hexagonal turret we call this the turret is used to hold the tools in normal lathe engine lathe almost we have a square tool post whereas you can go for four types of tools in turret lathe it is having different cutting tools which is mounted and in a single run almost all operations can be completed without changing the tool post manually it is an automatic tool post is changed automatically based on the operations or sequence of operations single spindle and multiple spindle automatic lathes so as the name indicates automatic lathe the tool and the workpiece are fed automatically and tool is also changed automatically the first loading and unloading is only the operation which is done manually whereas almost all operations when machine is on all are done automatically so tracer lathe it is hydraulic operator cross side which is controlled by the stylus bearing against round or flat templates so conventional programmable lathe it is a standard lathe which is programmed by repeated machining process or machining operations when you go for computerized numerically controlled it is a lathe which is controlled by a programmed computer so you feed the program and the lathe runs based on the programs which you feed so these are the different types of lathe which we use for our manufacturing so as here you can see the figure of a lathe so this is called as the head stock where you have an gear arrangements so the lever is connected to the gears so to change the speed of the spindle so you can vary the speed of this spindle based on the operations so to get a smooth finish the speed is being varied based on the operation here this is called as the spindle which is connected with the chuck so this is called as the chuck so as the gear is engaged with the chuck through a spindle so the rotation of the spindle power is transmitted to the chuck in the chuck you have a work piece fixed so the length rod which you call as the work piece which is to be machined so the work piece automatically rotated when it is fixed with the chuck and here you have three jaw chuck or four jaw chuck so three jaw chuck you call as a self centered chuck and four jaw chuck you need to go for centering the accuracy of four jaw chuck is very accurate or more accurate than three jaw chuck here you have a tool post so in the tool post you can fix the tool so it may be a square tool post whereas you can go for a four tools we use single point cutting tool for a machining operations and based on the operation to be performed on a machine you go for changing the tool post so knurling tool or there boring tools are there so based on that based on the operation you go for different types of tools so tool is held in this tool post so tool post is fixed on the compound rest which is in turn rests on the cross slide and all these are resting on the saddle you can rotate this handle to move the saddle towards the workpiece to feed the tool against the workpiece you rotate this saddle here you have a small lever this is used to move the cross slide so cross slide is fed in the cross wise movement to do phasing operations you go for rotating the cross slide so that the compound rest is moved against the workpiece and at the end you have a tail stock so the tail stock is called as the dead center whereas 
head stock is called as the live center because it is a rotating head and this tail stock is a stationary and it will not rotate it is used only for the support the center point of this workpiece and the center point of this tail stock will be in an horizontal axis at the end of the tail stock you have a hand wheel this is used to move this tail stock front and back so that to hold the workpiece grip to avoid vibrations you go for holding the workpiece so all these are resting on a guide base so the, the saddle along with the tail stock all rests on the guide base guide base and slide base hold these apparatus components are resting on the bed and here you have a feed rod the saddle is moved along the feed rod so you can engage here you have a lever so when you engage or disengage this lever the automatic rotation of this saddle will be based on the engagement and disengagement of this lever so all these are held on the bed and this rests on the floor so you can engage this feed rod for automatic movement of cross slide so forward it moves forward and when you put reverse speed the carriage moves away from the workpiece so that you can give an automatic feed so no manual is needed to move the saddle so these all can also be controlled by using a computer attached to this lathe that is what we call it as a computerized machine computer controlled lathe machine so first we shall see about turning operations so turning is done to reduce the diameter of the workpiece here what happens is the workpiece is rotated and tool is fed against this workpiece against this rotating workpiece tool is fed opposite to the rotating workpiece so that both the tool and the workpiece gets in contact with each other and the material starts to peel off so that peeling of is called as turning so based on the depth you give you get the accuracy so finished surface is obtained by maintaining a constant feed rate then moving the tool through this direction towards the chuck reduces the diameter of the workpiece to the entire length so this operation is called as turning so facing is operation which is used to reduce the length of this workpiece to reduce the length of this workpiece you go for a facing operation so when you do facing the total length of the workpiece is being reduced turning operation reduces the diameter and facing operation reduces the length so the face of this workpiece is machined by using facing operation so constant feed rate is very important in updating good accuracy of machined workpiece here we have a step turning you can use different steps by varying the feed so here you can at the end you can maintain a diameter of 25 mm at the middle you can maintain a diameter of 30 mm and at the end you can maintain a diameter of 45 mm so all these have different diameters which you call as steps so based on the application you can go for various step turning or either here you can have 30 mm at the center you can have 25 mm and at the this end you have 45 mm so wherever you need at required dimensions you can machine the 
work piece as per your required dimensions when you need a groove a small cut keyway like you can machine by using this step turning operations then you go for taper turning so taper turning is the operation which is done to insert so one end of the taper will be less whereas the other end of the taper will be higher diameter so the turning is done in a tapered manner the fed is given on the cross line that is tool post so here you can see at this end you have a handle when you rotate this handle the tool post is moved in this direction so you can tilt the cross slide based on the degrees to tilt this cross slide to get the taper you need the minimum diameter and maximum diameter so that you can get the tapered angle for that you go for a formula called tan theta is equal to capital d minus small d divided by 2l from this you can calculate the angle of taper so theta calculating the angle theta you can tilt this tool post cross slide you can tilt the cross slide to the obtained angle and when you give fit through this handle the tool post moves in a cross manner so that you can achieve machining in a tapered surface so that operation you call it as a taper turning so what is taper turning it is an uniform increase or decrease in diameter from the small end to the bigger end it moves in a tapered manner so here you can see this this is an machined operations of a lathe okay you can see this this is a machined operation of a lathe here what happens is the machined is given with a small feed rate so this all you call it as a discontinuous chips for hard materials you get a discontinuous chip so here when you move this tool along this direction you call this as a turning operation so when tool post is moved in this direction you call this as a facing operation so when it is moved in this through this against this so facing finishes the edges outer surfaces and cylindrical to the total length you call it as turning so facing produces a flat surface at the end of the workpiece it may be used to part of to separate the machined workpiece you call it as facing operation prevention of movement of carriage by locking it to the bed similarly usage of cross slide to feed the tool at right angles to the lathe axis as you have seen the tool is moved to the right angle so 90 degree it is moved to the 90 degree of this axis this axis you call it as the lathe axis and tool is moved in at 90 degree to this axis perpendicular direction when you move it in a parallel direction the operation you called is turning when you move this tool perpendicular direction to the axis of the lathe you call it as facing similarly reduces the length of the workpiece so distance of the workpiece is reduced by facing operation and diameter of the workpiece is reduced by turning operation so this is face of end of bar so here what happens is this is the lathe axis this is the lathe axis and this is the right angle to this axis so tool is moved to pass perpendicular to the lathe axis which you call it as a phasing operation 
the next we call it as drilling operation so drilling operation is used to produce holes in a workpiece so to lock for locking purpose you go for drilling or to hold to insert to go drilling cuts a hole of circular cross section in solid material so drilling is a process of cutting hole in a solid material to cut you go for a tool called drill bit as for a single point cutting tool only cut one cutting edge will be there when you go for drill bit you have two cutting edges so you have a twist nomenclature in this drill bit to do drilling the workpiece is held in the chuck and the drill bit is held in the tail stock so you can remove the spindle in the tail stock and you can insert this drill bit in the tail stock and you fix the drill bit in the tail stock by rotating the handle of the tail stock you can adjust the movement of the drill bit which is located in the tail stock so when you force this drill bit this is the tail stock so you can see in this lathe machine here this is the tail stock and at this end you lock the drill bit and this is the chuck which is held with the workpiece so it is rotated here you insert the drill bit and when you rotate this handle the drill bit is forced out it moves in this direction so you can move this tail stock you can fix here and you can have a lock and then you can rotate the handle so that the drill bit is forced against this workpiece so here you can see it is the workpiece and it is made to force against the workpiece so the workpiece is rotated when drill bit comes in contact with this rotating workpiece the drill bit is also rotated and what happens is the cutting edges of the drill bit are removes the material and due to the application of this feed or pressure feed is given and the drill bit is forced through the workpiece the material is removed and comes out through this gap which is in the drill bit and a hole is machined on the workpiece so this operation you call it as drilling so here you can see this this is the a drill bit and this is the workpiece which is held in the chuck so this workpiece will be rotating and this is the center point this center point must match with the center of this drill bit so immediately what happens is when you force this this is the dead center and this is the live center when this comes in contact with this center the drill bit starts rotating and the material is removed and it is moved through this twist drill so this operation is called as drilling then you go for knurling so you can see a knurled operation on the levers the knurled operation is done to have a grip so it uses a special tool called knurling tool instead of single point cutting tool you take off the single point cutting tool and you fix the knurling tool so that the impression of this knurling tool is made to or it is forced on the workpiece it impinges on the workpiece so that the shape of this tool is formed on the workpiece so knurling is used for the purpose of grouping so you can see in the levers to hold it rigidly to avoid slip you go for knurling so generation of serrated surfaces on the workpiece you call it as knurling to do knurling operation the speed of this workpiece is maintained at an rpm of 60 to 80 rpm and a feed of 0.38 to 0.76 mm per revolution 
is given for the spindle so that a good knurling is made on the workpiece it's formed on the workpiece so based on the knurling tool shape of the knurling you can have straight knurling diamond knurling so crossed knurling so straight knurling will have only one parallel lines on the surface of this workpiece when you go for diamond you have a cross multiplication mark on the knurling so grip is still higher than this straight knurling and angular knurling so this is what you can see here this is the dead center so this is the spindle so a yeah, lengthy rod when it is rotated along with this chuck if the rod is very length there may be vibration at this end so here no problem it is held with the chuck at this end what happens is there may be some vibrations to avoid that the tool post is made to hold the lengthy bar rigidly so that there will not be any vibration if there is vibration then you will not get a smooth curve face and the machining operation will not be accurate in order to avoid that you use this dead center to avoid this vibration so this is the length bar which is held with this dead center and what happens is when chuck rotates here you have a knob which is fixed with this so automatically the workpiece alone gets rotates and this dead center will be stationary it will not vibrate or it will not rotate so thread cutting so we used bolt and nut so nut it is an internal threading and bolt it is an external threading so both bolt and nut engages based on the internal and external threading operations so generation of helical ridge on a cylindrical compound so helical ridge on the helical is it may be based on the thread is based on the application where you go for width worth thread or inch thread we call it as or metric thread based on the application so you need to fix the pitch angle based on the pitch angle you set the gears and you can go for an automatic feed to have a constant feed constant feed rate with constant movement of the tool so here you engage the lead screw with the saddle so that based on the direction of rotation of the chuck the forward and reverse movement of the tool is given so what happens is here when you go for manually while you take it return we must have a constant feed or else the pitch will be damaged so it is best suited to go for automatic feed this is done by engaging the saddle with the lead screw and when it is forward direction you go for the forward movement of the lead screw tool post and then reverse movement of the tool post is attained by the reversed speed of the chuck you have a lever to have an forward and clockwise and anti clockwise rotation of the chuck you have a lever by engaging and disengaging the lever you may go for forward and reverse rotation of the chuck so these are the different operations which is performed on a lathe with this we have an facing operation facing is to remove the length of the workpiece to decrease the length of the workpiece you go for facing so it is moved at right angle to the axis when the tool is moved at a right angle to the axis of the lathe you call it as facing so turning is what when the tool is moved parallel to the lathe axis you call it as turning so taper turning it is moved at a constant angle so that there is a small end at and a bigger end the material is removed from the small end and then 
it goes towards the bigger end there is a decrease in the removal of the material then counter turning is what you do turning and then you go for with that you go for a taper turning so form turning is what the shape of the tool is impinged on the work piece so all woodworks when you go for woodworks you go for form tool so form tool is used in the same shape of the tool chamfering is to produce sharp edges so when you go for sharp edge you call it as chamfering then cutting off to remove sharp edges you go for chamfering off and then you go for cutting off to remove off and threading operation is to have thread on the work piece similarly boring tool which is used for enlarging the internal holes you do drilling you produce internal holes when you do drilling you produce internal holes and when you want to increase the size of the internal hole or in a hole you go for boring operation so boring enlarges the drilled hole to enlarge the drilled hole you go for an operation called boring operation then knurling operation is to impinge similar to form form turning is similar to knurling whereas form turning you the shape of the tool is impinged on the work piece similarly knurling a gripped surface is produced on the work piece so this is a uh, about lathe which is we call it as a universal machine so nearly almost all operations threading boring shaping removing the material almost all operations can be performed on a lathe so why lathe is called as an universal machine and this machine is almost universal usage of this machine with good surface finish so you have cnc operator lathe cnc trainer lathe whereas automatic feed with automatic programmed control over different operations are made so with this we shall have an into today's session which is about lathe from next class session we shall see about special purpose machine such as shaper machine planer machine slaughter and then drilling machine and then you go for grinding machines thank you